recording. Oh, welcome, Brad. Hello, Brad. Hi. Good I'm glad. I'm happy to see you as well. I'm glad you got the right link. I was nervous all of a sudden that I'd sent out the wrong link. So I sent it out again quickly now. Everything's good. Wonderful. So Brad, we've got a couple of people joining us tonight. Um, I'm just going to give it a couple of minutes, if that's okay, just to let everybody come in. Um, mm -hmm. How are things in Canada? Uh, well, that depends on your point of view. <laughs> That's true. <laughs> where, where I am, everything's perfect. Everything's well. So Canada, when I look at yeah. the lens, when I look at the lens of media in that sense. I'm sure there's a lot of shenanigans going on, but I don't live by that standard, right? So no, no. I just, it's just heard... of just being being yourself, living in your own space, and knowing that everything is perfect and all is well. Absolutely, that's true. I just um, listen to your beautiful. <laughs> piece on the new earth um astral uh, out of body oh, out of body, uh, out of for, body 4d earth it was earth, such yeah. a oh it was such a special yeah. special sharing yeah i paid another visit to it the other night as well too just very briefly oh wow can we ask you about that oh, of course yeah Okay, wonderful. Yeah, I absolutely loved it. I actually it's just, went it's to... Astral, it's just astral projection. You're just projecting astrally and you're going to the earth and you're checking it out. Same yeah, aesthetic. beautiful. I know. <clears throat> I actually downloaded that teaching that you suggested because I want to give it a try, you know. Oh, the Yoga Nidra. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, that's on Udemy. So it's a, it's a paid course, but it, he goes into pretty good details. There's other ones on Udemy as well, too, where he does like a teacher training as well, too. So I'm learning yoga nidra as well, too, because I will integrate it into the stuff I'm doing. Oh, that's beautiful. Yeah, it's 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 not that easy to get fully out of your body like that in a conscious, completely It takes conscious. some work. It does take some work. Like it's been challenging for me when I went through full realization. A lot of these things are feeling a little bit easier. But prior to that, uh, yeah, it takes some work. You got to work on it. It's kind of like how you get into yoga, right? In time, you develop flexibility. In time, you start to realize the nature of its union, but you don't get that right away. You're not going to just go to one yoga class and then all of a sudden you're a guru, right? Mm, no, exactly. <laughs> you, have you have to work with it. So it's the same thing in this process. So as long as you don't mind working, then you're, it's really going to pay <laughs> off. Yeah, I definitely want to start putting some energy towards it. Anyway, so I think I'm just going to go ahead and just give a little welcome to you, Brad, because um, I'm not going to wait. I'm not going to worry about waiting because we've got an hour together and I just want to make the most of it. So I'm just going to read you a little, read a little um, thing from your website just to welcome you because um, it is... Since 2008, Brad Johnson has worked deeply with the inner self as a healer, channeler, psychic, and Akashic record reader, the metaphysical and metaphysical researcher. Brad's profound teachings delivered simply makes him one of the most helpful spiritual teachers available around the world. And that is most certainly my experience. So, and Brad's teachings can be found at New Earth Teaching, and he has always got incredible material there. So, welcome, okay. Brad. Thanks for being with us again. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, Brad, what I thought we could do tonight, I know I got hold of you after I heard a little reading that you did uh, on South Africa, and I wondered if there's a few people that would like to ask you some questions and maybe you could I don't know if you would be prepared to do a re couple of readings and a couple of on answering a couple of questions for us yeah if you have any questions you can feel free to share okay um so I've got one question here which is from Leonie she's not here tonight but she asked if you could possibly shed some light on this she said she says what role does Southern Africa, or specifically any country in Africa, play in the service of the world initiative? Or in, you know, in, it's, not, it's, not a, it's not about that. It's not about thinking one country is going to be responsible for much of the uplifting of the world. We're all doing our part. It's kind of like the organs. If you're looking at the organs of the body and saying, oh, it's just all about the heart, 
don't worry about the liver, don't worry about the lungs, don't worry about the intestines, it's just all about the heart. Well, then you're going to be impaired, right? Every country has its own source. I've also referred to as countries being like the organs of the body. So you're looking into the idea of a collective. You're looking at different collectives. So I've been to South Africa, and when I've looked into South Africa as well too, there's a lot of ancient knowledge there. You yeah. guys have ancient history going back millions of years. You have fossils scattered all over the place, and some of you just walk past it like it's no big deal. You have ancient ruins everywhere, and you just walk around it like it's no big deal. You have evidence of giants. You have evidence of the Nephilim. You have evidence of dinosaurs. You have evidence of, uh, of ETs. You have evidence of the Anunnaki mm. everywhere and scattered right so yeah. basically i would say that south africa itself is like the a treasure trove of the ancient knowledge of mm -hmm. our planet right but like i said it's like an organ so again we have an important organ here so if we're looking at let's say for example like the liver well then it's helping to uh bring about this this great uh, transformation realization of what is all around you because when i went to south africa i was talking to michael tellinger Mm. And he just showed me all these things like, yeah, there's fossils everywhere. And I'd have to do some dowsing work on them. I'd go into challenging states. I'd talk to them about the, uh, the stone circles that are around there as well, too. There's portals, there's vortexes. It's everywhere, right? Yeah. So South Africa is a very big treasure trove. I've also talked about the continent of Africa itself being like one of the ancient motherlands together with Mu and uh, Africa. Right? Mm -hmm. So you're basically looking at a powerful motherland, the countries, of course, representing different collectives pertaining to Africa. But Africa, again, is like the mother. So I say it's like the big liver, right? It's, it's filtering out a lot of stuff. It really was all about uh, preservation. It really was all about the idea of the feminine as well, too. Mm -hmm. Upliftment, transformation, right? The ancient knowledge, all that's around you. So really, I would say do not take your South Africa for granted. You should be going out and looking at these things because this is your history millions and millions of years of history are scattered all around you just yeah. like that i would love to have canada like that but canada has nothing like that right there's really no wow ancient, no there's but, no ancient ruins, mountains there's no fossils scattered everywhere nothing like that nothing like so that was, I was blown away when i saw that yeah it's so very that, rich and I wealthy here, I'd, be, I'd be spending the next years of my life doing this and mike was like well what do you think i do what i do <laughs> so you know this is exactly why he um, goes into this like he's telling me showing me about the toroidal stones the torus stones mm. and i was feeling the energy off and they're incredibly powerful i mean you guys are in a tapestry of ancient history that needs to be looked at very very much yeah yeah the the whole um country and i mean even the whole continent has got a massive amount of history and it's really a record keeper isn't it the ancient motherland that's the idea yeah so you have all kinds of secrets there as long as people like michael is one of the few people who actually do anything about it that actually works with these things I'm like are there more people like you so not really not in africa no mm. i'm like you, you're kidding me right people are not curious that fossils are scattered all over the place it's like it's raining fossils from the sky you have all these fossils everywhere you got these ancient ruins in the mountains you got stone circles you got torus stones it blows me away man that's like the it's like a it's like a kid in a candy store right you're just looking at all of this ancient history around you millions of years like even when we went to um i'm trying to remember adam's calendar mm. right that's that's like the stonehenge of south africa absolutely right? and you can see evidence of the anunnaki all around you mm. so like i said when you're looking at south africa you're looking at ancient history you're looking at the divine feminine you're looking at the kind of like the the record keeper of absolutely. everything that represents the planet earth so, I mean, look at Egypt, for example, right? I mean, Africa really is the cornerstone to our ancient connections. Yeah, and Egypt's also got um, incredible history in it. I mean, I think the seven, the, the seven pyramids were initiation chambers specific um sort of specifically designed to initiate uh whoever was in it to a certain level of mastery. And so there's all sorts of mysteries around um africa i mean i think yeah even zimbabwe you know which is just yeah. just north of us has amazing ruins that haven't you know haven't been fully i, I mean i know michael's done quite a lot of research but it does just keep expanding actually the more that you yeah, the, the entire giza plateau is actually a map that's really what it represents 
it's a map that basically is in symmetry together with the constellations. Right? So when you actually start to figure out this map, you actually start to look at timelines. There's initiation as part of it as well, too. It was also a power center, a power station. There are many different factors to the pyramids. Right? There, there's so many different things to it. But really, all, all together, when you look up, you're actually seeing it as a map. Mm, amazing. And um, someone wanted to know a little bit about, so, okay, there's all these different um, fossils and um, different, there's this like layers and layers and layers of history within South Africa and all over Africa. And then there's also, um, there's also in, like inner earth pieces in Africa in Africa, is that is that correct? Like sort of portals into well, they something. Go to different dimensional, they go to different dimensional Earths. So there's a lot of different, some of them are stargates as well too. Yeah. Some of them are taking off planet. So there's ones that go to different Earths at different times. I haven't seen anything in regards to any inner Earth portals, just from personal uh, knowledge of that. But when I was rocking around some of them, a lot of these uh, stone circles in that sense, and represent these powerful kind of gateways, right? Mm -hmm. So some of them would be performed through ceremonies and you can actually open up portals and you can go right. to different dimensions of Earth. Some of them were even stargates that would take you to some other planet as well too. Mm -hmm. uh, Adam's calendar was all about that. That's exactly how the off-worlders came. Anunnaki came yeah. into Africa was through Adam's calendar. Mm -hmm. And how's the portal? I mean, I know we had this, have had this conversation before, but how's the portal doing in terms of it? I think it was shut down. Well, they're all deactivated. Deactivated, uh, yeah. Active at all. yeah. They used to be, but they're all deactivated right now. They were performed through ceremonies. But when you basically disrupt the geometry of the structure, you basically render it inert mm -hmm. so that you can't really go into any of those things anymore. So you'd have to basically have the ancient knowledge within yourself to rebuild those portals. And then being able to know the ancient rites to do to basically summon something through that. So mm. A lot of that knowledge has been lost. But again, something always sparks up a reoccurrence, a, 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 an uprising of it again through people that come onto the plane who basically have that knowledge assigned to them. So in that sense, it becomes a resurgence of ancient knowledge. Someone comes along and will always bring it about when the appropriate time comes. Okay. Um, I've got another question, which is, a little bit unrelated, but maybe not, um, might be tied into this idea of the the sort of um, dragon, um, the dragon energies that are linked here into Africa as well. There's been a lot of very unusual movement in the skies and a lot of like dragon type energies showing up in the skies. Um, you know, like very specific clouds that don't look like clouds at all. I'm, I'm wondering if, do you think that this is tied to um, inner earth beings that are sort of finding their way out into a new dimension? Of well, why don't we look into the tarot for that? We'll look okay. into the tarot and see what the tarot says in regards to dragon energies in Africa and see what they say. And so the past is letting us know that there's there is energy of that nature, but it's letting you know of a new shift. It's shifting into a new dimension, right? Dragons are all about being kind of like the instruments of dimensional uh, transits, right? They're the ones that can actually take you into different dimensions, into different domains altogether. So we're getting ready for a ride. That's basically oh, wow. what's happening. We're about to move forward in that way. So basically, you have dragons that you can again not visible in this dimension, but basically in other dimensions. And they're basically getting these vortexes and transit gateways opening up. And this is again, kind of like about to take our planet for a ride, right? So again, we're, we're about to just kind of us as a young race, but also looking at ourselves renewed is we're about to take a very big ride uh, into this new dimension. I would say new dimension of operation. And we're now seeing again, the, the dragons are kind of trying to show us the world in a much more open way, trying to much more showing it to us in a much more evolved way. So it's kind of saying, look at the world anew. Don't look at it in regards to your material problems. There's so much happening on the world that you're missing, right? So this is again, the reminder that they're doing is they're trying to show us 
our godliness. They're trying to show us that when you guys are spotting dragons, really listen to them, listen to what they're doing, because these are the master gatekeepers. These are the ones that are able to tie into different dimensions, different realities, uplifting the planet in a new way, right? So the planet is moving up to new ground. It's moving up octaves. That's the whole idea. So dragons are being like the overseers or the conduits or the instruments to helping Earth move up that way. So there's dragons of different types. You can see dragons in the sky. You can see dragons in the ocean. You can see dragons around the planet. You can see them in the earth. You can see them in the fire. You can see them in the air. You can see mm. them in the water, right? So they're all very much elemental and they're working together. And they often work together in these kind of vorticular patterns and they're attempting to shift the energy. They're trying to move it up into higher ground. Mm, okay, wonderful. That's, that's really quite exciting. Yeah, it's not so, so, much, about, it's not so much about the inner earth. Right. Okay. The inner earth really has its own its own uh, contingency of plans and agendas, and humans aren't really a part of that yet. We will be in time. Uh, I know because I've talked to an inner earth civilization. They don't really have anything planned for humanity at this time. Mm -hmm. uh, but in the times ahead, they will. Humanity kind of has to grow up a little bit more. So as they start to mature in that sense, then there will be opportunities where humanity can actually visit inner earth. Uh, I was actually talking to a group called the Delphi uh, mm -hmm. a couple of years back. And they were talking about the idea of actually having a small area of land within their earth that would be available for humanity. But it would be available at a particular point. And few people may actually already be aware of this. They may have already got contacts. I was one of those contacts, but I ended it when I stopped shelling. And so they may get uh, people coming in astrally and just seeing this space and learning from the space as well, too. But like I said, it's not going to be in the mainstream, so to speak until humanity really reaches a higher state of maturity. We have a lot of growing up to do first. We mm -hmm. have to stop fighting each other. We have to stop fighting ourselves. We have to stop fighting the planet. When we start doing that, a lot of great things will start rolling out and shifting all together. So like I said, for this earth, it's moving into a new octave, but there already is another dimensional earth that's already ready. That's the fourth density earth. And that's the earth to where people who have been chosen by spirit will actually go. Uh, they can either go there now, astrally, out of body, or uh, again, they will go there when this life is finished. Hmm. Amazing. Wonderful. Um, I know Jillian, who's just come in, uh, she, we, we're having major um, electricity outages at the moment. Every, every four hours, we have no hmm. electricity, and for hours and hours, uh, like sometimes it's two or three power cuts for you know, up to eight hours at a time and then electrical storms and crazy seemingly engineered weather. So it's a bit of a combination of, of the, you know, the dimensional shift and what seems to be um, governmental produced weather. So um, Jill just disappeared for a minute there because her electricity went out, <laughs> but she's back. So she had a couple of questions for you, Jill. Did you want to ask, ask yeah, a couple I'd, of things? I'd love to, that's all right. Um, the one of, you probably mostly answered it when you say humanity is quite immature. Um, I was wondering about the maturity of South Africa. Um, like the, because so many of us, so many of the people that live in South Africa are, are uneducated. And when I mean, I mean uneducated in the, the formal sense. Um, so I was wondering about how um, awake and grown up South Africans are in general. Well, that's a hard thing to say. Like when I was in South Africa, I, I love the space as well too, but it kind of reminds me similar to what the West is going through at the same time, right? There are people who I've met, they were very intelligent, very loving, very, there's very loving and heart-centered people. That's the whole idea. The, the whole idea is that a lot of the loving people just need to kind of stand up a little bit more. They have to kind of let themselves realize that they're leaders and that they're helping people and that they're kind of, they're ready to take on a bigger role. And I don't think if they're aware of that or not, right? South Africa is very much the same. I meet people there, like I was walking around the streets of Johannesburg and I felt like I was walking downtown Vancouver where I am here. So there's, there's that kind of similar feeling, but uh, like I said, there's just so much history around you guys. You have so much ancient artifacts all around you. It's just, I would like to see a lot more of the South Africans really taking in the heritage of the ancient uh, knowledge that's all around you. 
right? This is very different from the idea of the West. We don't have that. You guys have history everywhere. You have ancient ruins everywhere. You have relics everywhere. You have fossils everywhere, right? And like I said, Michael Tallinger is the only person I've met who, in the best way I can put it, who actually gives a damn that that stuff is there, right? Mm -hmm. So that needs to change. There needs to be a lot more working in regards to a lot of the ancient knowledge that you guys have. You guys are at the cornerstone of the motherland here. And it's just about being able to really, like I said, take responsibility. When I'm talking about an immature society, what that basically means is people are still just very much into technology. They're still just seeing the outside, right? They're still just very much in the mind. When you start to look at these things that are all around you and kind of listen to the heart and what the heart is trying to tell you about all of these great things that are around you, like your, your ancient history that's everywhere, you can enlighten people because you guys have all this stuff all around you. You can look at these fossils, you can look at these ancient ruins, you can look at these stone circles, you can look at these Taurus stones that Michael was constantly showing me. And like I said, he's the one uh, in South Africa that I felt was just so passionate about what he was doing, loved what he was doing. He says, I wouldn't want to move anywhere else. I want to be right here because this is where all the, the great stuff is. This is where our ancient knowledge is. I said, there needs to be more people like that. Right? Mm. I haven't really seen them in South Africa. There's people who are interested, like when I was with the group, but we were from like all over the world, right? We were looking at all these things. And again, we saw a giant's footprint in the, in the stone as well, too. We saw a giant's heart. Uh, just before that stone as well, too. We see evidence of the Anunnaki. We see evidence of the Nephilim. We see evidence of off-worlders. You have technology everywhere. Mm -hmm. And nobody's asking those questions, right? Where did these stone uh, circles come from? What about these fossils? Why are these giants here? And why are we not being told about the giant's presence in mainstream media, right? These, this is what I'm talking about. This is where the maturity comes in. We're, we're taking responsibility for what we see here. If I had a lot of that stuff here in Vancouver, in Surrey, I would definitely be raising a big uh, stink about it and saying, hey guys, let's look into this stuff. You know, we got ancient ruins, we got stone circles here, we got fossils everywhere. Let's look into this. This is ancient history all over. So really just being able to make an impact from where you are, because you guys have an advantage of where you are. You're in the cornerstone of ancient history. That needs to be studied. That needs to be worked, looked into and taking responsibility and really bringing that to the world. People want to know about this stuff. That's really the responsibility of South Africans is get people to know your history because your history is so incredibly rich. Yeah. So we need another trip to the stones, Joel. <laughs> we had a fabulous one um, June last year. We had an incredible trip there but I've I've been actually going since Michael first kind of found it so mm -hmm. from somewhere around 2007 2008 and um, you know been absolutely fascinated and love the adventure of the place so you're right you know it does there is absolutely most mind-boggling evidence of, of layers of Eden you know that can just be unfolded and unfolded I mean, I remember listening to your one video that you did, Brad, when you were here, you channeled um, Adronis for, for the site, and it was absolutely brilliant. I mean, you expanded so much on what I think had already been said uh, in terms of like I real aim. I can't even remember what I said, but I'd have to look back. But it was like video. back millions of years. It wasn't even like the 450,000 year oh, Anunnaki history. It was like millions yeah, you this know, is you why as the motherland, right? This is why, again, the ancient history. This is why I say when you guys really get into that stuff and you're saying, guys, we got history everywhere. And now it's attracting all these people and they want to know about. Great. Now the maturity is coming through. People want to know about their ancient history and they're not being fed the, the garbage stuff that we've been fed throughout mainstream media for such a long time. Right. About Darwinian evolution and all that garbage. Mm -hmm. Right. So it's really looking into the idea of the ancients and how. Humanity was basically seeded from these ancient ancestors of ours, of ourselves. Like I said, Adam's calendar shows that, right? We basically have evidence of the Anunnaki uh, taking place in, the, in Adam's calendar, where they were first coming upon this planet. That was the stargate they used, was Adam's calendar. Yeah, and all of the Genesis work that was done there as well. There, no, there were an Anunnaki, Anunnaki maidens that were coming through that portal well over about, I think it was about 200,000 years ago or something like that nature. Mm. I was doing some uh, scanning with it. I was talking with the Dronus as well, too. He's saying, yeah, this was almost one of the birthplaces to where humanity began. Yeah. Was at his calendar. 
Yeah. And it's called the Genesis root. That's what it's called, that whole area. So we know, yeah. you know, that um, they had Genesis projects there. And it's definitely up to us to take a little bit more responsibility of bringing more people through that site and mm -hmm. just opening people's minds. Because I think yeah, the, understanding... The day, I there, the day I was there was very foggy. So I wasn't able to see much of everything else around it. So I was basically just kind of concentrating on the site, but there was so much fog. And Mike was saying, this is very unusual. Like we don't really get this much fog where we are right now, but the whole place was just really, really foggy. So we kind of came at an interesting time back mm. in uh, 2019. It was interesting. Yeah, you often get that fog coming in all around you. It's like a, almost like a dimension shift. Like that it's like the mists of Avalon. Yeah, so absolutely. <laughs> you <Yeah>. covered. <laughs> Okay, Jill, you had another couple of questions. Um, I have to give you a minute to think after trying to get the power back. I'm feeling a bit flustered. You were wanting to ask um, on, about medbeds technologies and stuff like that, and also around the Zim redemption notes and if those things are actually coming, you know, because a lot of people are saying it's, you know, the Nasara Jasara is imminent and i've already given my perspective on the sargasara can you share it with us or not Please. don't buy into it don't buy into it okay. not a real thing right it's something that's been contrived for a very long time it's been around since the 90s right people yeah. have basically even in the earlier days of the internet people were talking about it right the sargasara people have been waiting since the early 90s for that to come out and now here you guys are like over 30 years later, not a peep, and there's still the faithful, right? If you would take that faith and put it into something that was very, very beneficial for yourself, you'd be uh, on, on cloud nine right now, okay? Mm -hmm. It's not about that. Yes, prosperity funding will be a part of new things that are coming, but it's not rooted through the idea of a Nisara Gasol, okay? That thing is much more, in the best way I can put it, it's more of a scam than anything else. Okay. Okay. And I know some people may get mad at me because they had so much faith in this. And hey, I understand that. I get that. I even did readings on it not too long ago on my New Earth Insights mm -hmm. and looked into it and said, sorry, guys, this is just a contrived thing, right? People are very, very much interested in it. And you are going to get prosperity funding in certain ways. But uh, the, the, the systems that are coming will be much more better than what that thing represents. So you're getting something better than what that thing promised, right? A lot of people think that they're just going to be millionaires, We'll get to be millionaires because prosperity funding is going, no. Mm -hmm. You're going to be pretty secure. You're going to be pretty well off. You'll be fine, right? I'd say you're probably going to move up to like middle-class status. But being able to think that you're going to be millionaires or billionaires or anything of that nature, it's not going to happen, right? You cannot align to the value that you do not think that you are. Because if you were given a million dollars, you basically just splurge it, you blow it, you do it on things because you still don't think you deserve that money right? The idea of value in that sense all comes through how you see it. It's based upon how what you feel you deserve, what you feel you're worth. So like I said, a lot of this will move much more into middle class status pertaining to payouts that come and prosperity funding, debt forgiveness, right? Mm -hmm. A lot of that is happening as well too. So there's debt forgiveness, which I don't believe necessarily ever covered, but the idea of debt forgiveness, maybe it did, I don't know, but debt forgiveness and being able to kind of move into that idea where you're, you're not starving anymore, right? Everybody will have shelter. Everybody will have clothing. Everybody will have food. Everybody will have education. Everybody will have basic needs, right? You don't even have to worry about money with that. That's just the whole idea of what everybody will naturally have. But before we can get there, we have to clean up. We're in transition time, guys. This is not about the idea of raining money down from the sky and thinking that you're going to get this within next week or next month. No, you got to get out of that delusion. Okay, same thing goes with med beds. Okay. Okay. A lot of people are talking about med beds and there's a secret space program, med beds coming. No, there's not. No, there's not. Okay, you will certainly have certain med beds that represent maybe ones that could do like their own surgeries, some other ones that may get a little bit more advanced in that way, maybe kind of like MRIs without having to do MRIs, deep imaging scanners in that sense. There's some pretty incredible ones that are coming, but the idea of an SSP style med bed where you can basically completely regrow your limb, or you can basically be an 80 year old woman and coming out of it looking like you're 18 again. No, not yet. Okay. Those times, okay. those things will be ahead in the generations ahead. We, we, we just cannot jump from where we are right now in the modern era to a sudden quantum leap to something like that. It doesn't work that way, guys. Okay. Everything comes together through the state of natural transition. 
Now, as I've always talked about, is when you start learning to work within yourself, you can do such beautiful, amazing things in that way. When you start to move much more into the deeper realization of yourself, not only can you do things like that, but you're not concerned about the body and the mind anymore. You actually know what freedom actually is, and it's nothing in the mind. It's nothing in the body. You have to go beyond that. You are not the mind. You are not the body. And when you move into that, that pure state of freedom, where you're just going into silence, you're going into stillness, you're going into surrender, you now know who you really are. Right? So yes, there's incredible technologies to come. There certainly will be. We're going to be basically replacing fuel-based cars, right? The fossil fuel industry will basically be taken down here, I'd say probably the next few years. But we're moving into greater times, new technologies, but it's not going to be a grand quantum leap right away. That thing need, that needs to take time. There has to be continuity to these shifts that take place. We've certainly gone a long way from the 1990s when the internet first came to where we are right now, right? That only took about 30 years. Mm -hmm. And that is the appropriate uh, continuity that we need. So when you're looking at new breakthrough technology, first of all, the corruption of the pharmaceutical industry has to go. That can't mm -hmm. stay. That's got to be taken down. All right. corruption has to fall. None of it can remain. Because if any of it remains, if you guys try and get SSP med beds, well, then they're going to be trying to take that, take that away from you right away, right? And if they, even if they do have that, okay, sure, give us about uh, $55 million and we'll let, you right. have, we'll let you have five minutes in that bed, okay? So like I said, this is where people just get really caught up. A lot of people are throwing hopium around the internet about the Sarah Gacera and about SSP med beds and all that stuff. And this is the problem is that people put so much of their investment of hope into it and it mm -hmm. destroys them when they realize that this isn't coming. Okay. So we got to have discernment here. We have to really be discerning about all these things that are coming. So I've done many readings with med beds in the past as well too. Not once did I see anything in regards to an SSP style med bed coming anytime soon. Right? Mm. Generations to come, maybe next couple of generations, probably. But it's, it's kind of like how we have 3D printing. We have 3D printing. And again, that's helping us to work with automated levels of manifestation. And that will eventually manifest into something like a replicator or a materializer in that way. But that's going to take years of continuity to come together. I know I'm busting people's bubble here. It's like, oh, bro, come on. I want this tomorrow. I want this next week. I want this next year. Too bad, man. It's not up to you. Mm. Right? This is not your planet. It's not what you say goes. Right? We have to remember we're working with a collective here. There is a per population of one. And this is your only planet. I'm sure you could manifest a lot of those great things to come together if you have the know-how. Right? But this is not your planet. You're not in charge. You're not the one calling the shots. You're not the one running things. This is a collective. And as a collective, the collective is not there yet. It will certainly go, but we're basically going through a culling right now. We're trimming the fat. We're clearing away the corruption. That's what's got to go first. Mm -hmm. And then through the clearing of that, great things can arise. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Don't be hasty for the idea of money. Think that's going to solve your problems. You guys should know better than that. Right? Like don't think that some big med bed is going to come out and save your problems. You guys know better than that. Right? This is all about living through here. We talk about spirituality so much. How many of us are actually doing the inner work that matters? and realizing what you're capable of from within. It's mm -hmm. not about the outside world. The mind is not gonna save you. It's the heart that is. So, so that, that was kind of ties in with your immaturity. Um, if, if the population's immature, then it definitely can't um, escalate to that sophisticated- Well, they, they basically depend upon these things. Right. Mm -hmm. Even if these things aren't even being created, they're trying to use wishful thinking for it. Well, there's wishful thinking that, again, I'll be a millionaire through Nacera. There's wishful thinking that an SSP bed will just be in like around my, my local pharmacies and I can just pop in there. Right. Mm -hmm. No, I mean, this is it's a cool idea, but that's not what's happening. Right. People cannot really determine what is actually happening in this world and what they want to have happen. There's too much wanting. There's too much craving and there's too much having this. And that's the problem right? You need to be aware of what's happening. And the true nature is beingness. You want to practice the doing, not doing, mm. right? And just being and just observing what this world is all about right now. And when you're like that, you know exactly what's, what's ahead. Why do you think you, I know these things. 
about what's happening in the times ahead, guys, because I listen to the world. I listen to the earth, right? There's that awareness. And it just comes in while I'm talking to you guys right now. So that has to come to the heart space. I know a lot of us have these big wishful thinkings and then wanting to have all these great things. And that will come at some particular point, but it's just not immediate. Okay. Not immediate when it comes. And this is basically helping you guys to kind of recenter yourself so that we can spend time on what really matters. And this is what really matters. You have to learn to live from the inside. The outside world will only destroy you. The inside world is what's going to be your salvation. That's where your heaven is. Hmm. We rely too much on these outside things and you forget your power. You basically just go idle with all these things on the outside autopilot way. And you're just going through more and more suffering because you're constantly looking on the outside world. You're constantly looking at Maya. You're not looking at who you are, who your godliness is in here. And that's where you have to start taking the first steps. So this is why I've created free practices like the BCR technique and prana transmission technique and cord removal healing and conflict elimination. We got to clear away the problems that we hold on to. We have to clear away our regrets. When we clear all those things away, you will have no desire to look in the outside world anymore. You're just playing with the outside world. You're just walking through it. You're just working with it, but you're not a part of the outside world. You know better. This is the difference between someone who's realized and someone who is not. Someone who is not relies on the outside world to be their savior. And that's why they're lost. That's why they're suffering. That's why they're in panic. That's why they're ill. Because they're constantly relying on the outside to save them when they don't know that they have the power to do it themselves. Mm. So I'm helping you guys to see the power that you have within yourself just by looking in some of these practices that I'm giving you for free, by the way. Mm. <laughs> yeah no i understand that i can see how um if if we had to move the civilization too fast from where we at now to into you know a quick fix something then we'd miss, yeah, we'd miss the whole um phase of evolution where we can I mean, actually god, no offense but god doesn't work so stupidly like that okay <laughs> So that just becomes human ego. We want the quick fix. We want to hit a red button. Bam, here's my med bed. Here's my cake. Here's my instant dinner. All of a sudden together, just through a red button, right? You are missing everything that represents the true nature of yourself, right? You have to look into how all these things can appear. And yes, they, the, the times that come, the generations ahead, we'll probably have inventions like that. We'll probably have replicators and we'll be able to do space travel and we'll be able to go eat lunch on Mars, right? And being able to go to Phobos and have a hotel there and stay there. And we're going to do incredible things, but we are the pioneers right now to try and make that happen for the generations to come, right? Mm -hmm. We haven't even touched the quantum age yet, guys. And that's a very important part. We're still in the very primitive Neanderthal-like digital age, okay? And that is very primitive. That's, pro that's Cro-Magnum, mm -hmm. okay? So when we get out of that, you start going into the quantum age, that's where you actually become interstellar. Interstellar nature comes to the quantum age. You have to understand the quantum field. You have to understand consciousness. You can't just keep playing around with petty science that represents the material and nuts and bolts of physical reality. I won't tell you a damn thing. Mm -hmm. It's about being able to go into the quantum age, see how everything is one, see how everything is together, see how there are infinite possibilities, that there are infinite dimensions that you can work with and how you can harness that either through the power of your mind or even through technology. Technology can be reproduced for that, quantum technology. Mm -hmm. So that's our next step. We're gonna be going into a quantum age as we move through this decade and into the next. That's the start of the quantum age. And how do you think we can best um, sort of guide others? I mean, I know you're talking about, okay, help people with um, understanding the history that is here, but is it just, it's, it's just a continual becoming an example of something. Well, that's, just, that's just one idea. That's one idea, just because that's where you guys are. You're in a right. place where there's history. But no, that's not the only way. But basically being familiar about what's around you certainly helps. But no, it's about being able to help people with their problems because you've helped yourself with your problems and now you're free. And now you've moved into full realization. You cannot help a person if you yourself are not realized. You have mm -hmm. to go through that realization. You have to know that you are God consciousness. You have to know that you are spirit. You have to know that the heart is the gateway to everything. 
right? And that, that answer to everything comes through silence. It doesn't come through noise. It doesn't come through your random thoughts in that sense, because that's all ego. All the mind is, is just a bundle of thoughts, expressions, and experiences. And that really doesn't do anything for you. It's just a translation construct. It's translating what spirit can actually teach you, but you have to go to spirit first. And to do that, we, again, firstly have to clear away all the muck. We have to clear away the falseness within ourselves. We have to clear away all the problems that are causing regrets, causing conflicts, causing harshnesses, causing, causing illnesses within ourselves. All of that's got to go. And fortunately, the practices that I've been teaching you guys for free have the ability to do that. So you're learning to completely defragment yourself. You're completely uncluttering yourself. You're, you're culling away all that stuff that doesn't matter. And now you look at the world and saying, oh my God, now it's peaceful. Well, it's not the world that's peaceful. You're peaceful and you're bringing your peace onto the world. Do not think that peace is gonna come out here and then go in here. Mm. It comes in here and goes out there. That's what we have to realize. And this is what people have been chasing, like a dog trying to chase its own tail. Here's the outside, here's the tail, here's the tail. And I'm spinning around, spinning around, spinning around. It's because I've been looking at the outside and the outside needs to give me answers and the outside needs to be my salvation and the outside needs to be my savior. And this person here needs to save my butt or else, mm. or my family needs to have my back or else. And you're lost. You don't realize yeah. that you're the only one here. You're the <laughs> only one here because nobody else has your perspectives. Nobody else has your thoughts. Nobody else has your feelings. Nobody else has who you are, but you. Mm. That's why you're the only one here. Everybody else here, guys, is just your subconscious. That's your subconscious. Other souls that are here, yes, but they're just reflections. They're constantly reflecting back to how you see yourself. So you're being aware of your self-judgments and how you judge others. You're being aware of your problems and what you feel the problems are of others that you're taking on and adopting through yourself. You mm -hmm. haven't really given yourself any leeway to free yourself, to shift yourself, to realize I'm God consciousness. I'm truly the center point here. And I'm able to change everything because I'm the only one in my life who can change me. I can't change my mom, my dad, my brother, my sister, my kids, my friends. I can't change any of them, but I can change and now when I change, now that's where paradise comes. I am not responsible for anyone else on this planet but myself because I'm the only one changeable. When I realize that I'm the only one changeable, I'm going to spend as much time in here as possible in cleaning myself out. And that's what I've been doing for the past few years. And this is where I am right now because I've done it. And this is why I'm teaching it to you guys. Mm. It really is the simplest thing in the world. But you know where the difficulty comes in? Yourselves. Because you think a change is impossible. You fear change so much and you fear your problems so much that you think they're unbeatable when in fact they're not. You're the one that's given them juice. You're the one that's given them that lightning. You're the one that's given them that fire. What happens when that fire and that lightning and that juice gets taken away? Well, they're rendered neutral and now they just all fade away into the background. What remains? Quietude, quietness, mm -hmm. silence, stillness, surrender. I am not the body. I am not the mind. I am that. Now you're free. This is it, guys. Did I say anything in regards to that stuff about you needing money or you needing a med bed, right? Or you needing any of these material goods to improve your life? No, because those are illusions. That is all part of the material impermanent reality, which is not the real reality. You will not find truth through the mind. You are only going to find truth by going beyond the mind into that stillness. That is God's abode. So when you are calm, when you keep quiet, when you keep still, that is where you will know God because you know yourself. God and you are one. You just don't know it. You're playing peekaboo with yourself until you actually know that I'm God consciousness. I've been God consciousness all along. It's not some other being up in the sky judging you. It's always been you. You just haven't known it. Mm. And this is what the realized know. This is what the masters for thousands of years have been trying to teach us. We haven't been getting it. Outside world, material world, material world, they got to do this, this. Yeah, distraction, distraction, distraction. That's not going to harmonize your soul. Only you can do that.
Med beds aren't going to do it. Money is not going to do it. Material goods aren't going to do it. Only you can do that. You see? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's let go of politics, let go of what everybody else is well, looking at outside, you know, and let actually start to do some practice, some self practice, you know, some self mastery practice. So I think we, we are. Realizing, it's realizing that you are not the body and that you are not the mind. So everything that you mentioned is just mind, anyways. Concepts are mind, ideas are mind. What about stillness? Stillness is where everything comes together. It's doing the not doing, right? And people think, well, Brad, maybe that just makes you lazy. It doesn't make you lazy. You are now realizing how the world truly operates when you are doing not doing, when you are being this, right? It's not laziness because, guys, I'm not lazy, right? I'm very much aware of what's going on. You are thickening your awareness. You are expanding your awareness. You are being much more aware of what's happening not only on this earth but in other earths. In other dimensions, you're being aware about how the entire universe operates by being. You can't do that through doing. Mm -hmm. That's you just trying to bunch your head against a, a concrete wall. Doing this has its place, but it's not going to bring you salvation. Being this is your salvation. Mm -hmm. So when, when you talk about developing, for example, that second body um, that you were talking about in your um, visit to the fourth dimensional earth that second body is kind of like um, it's almost like an astral light body right well, I'm, not, I'm not talking about the resurrection body basically what you're doing is you're just you're just going out into the astral body you do that every single night you go to sleep right? mm. all you're doing is you're basically just going on autopilot and you're not conscious about where you go in the dream time you just go off and, and you start playing ping pong or whatever it's, or whatever your dream is what I'm basically talking about is just going into the astral projection. So all you're doing is you're just projecting your awareness remotely. So basically you feel like you're leaving a body, but you're still conscious of your body, but you're going to these different places. It's kind of like where you're basically developing your own psychic senses. And the stronger that your psychic senses are, the more vivid you're going to see these places. Mine's decent. So I was able to get a pretty good, decent view of say, for example, fourth density earth. And it is absolutely beautiful. It is a hundred times more beautiful than this earth. And so this earth herself, she's beautiful. But we're even looking at an earth that's even more beautiful. Like you have aurora borealis through everything. You have aurora borealis, rainbow light effects pertaining to nature. Nature sings to you. The water in that sense sings to you. There's just, everything is just the most beautiful, enchanted energies of that earth that you can imagine. You have floating islands in the sky. Wow. Right? You have, you have uh, humans and non-humans living together. You have reptilians on that earth and they're working together with humanity, right? Ones that look like dinosaurs, kind of dinosaur humanoid. You have ones that are the hybrid children, the hybrid humans. They're working together with humanity, right? Native Americans, I was saying there, creating villages and basically being able to pull things out of the ether and being able to build these things without harming nature whatsoever. So there's incredible things that you can do. It's like being in the dream time. It's like you're in a dream time earth and that becomes your reality. So you're looking at all of this beautiful paradise, everything that surrounds you. It's just, it's, there's nothing that can really accurately describe how beautiful it is. You have to see it for yourself. You have waterfalls that are basically just falling down from the sky and it's just so straight and so clean. You don't know how it's even possible yet it's there. You have all of this beauty all around you. Like I said, you can start growing things just through the power of your thoughts. You can start strengthening the forest with the power of your thoughts. Like you're going in a dream plane. You're going in a dream time as if you are lucid and you're just being able to manifest all these things powerfully. That's what you're doing in the next dimension. The next dimension, the ability to manipulate matter is as simple as breathing. All it requires is just the willpower of your thought, right? It's really amazing. It's a very, very different experience from what we have here. When I was there, it was basically like a springtime day. It's not too hot, not too cold. Everything was just beautiful, just perfect, right? And like I said, I was at the top of this up the top of this mountain. I was able to kind of levitate myself down, going down into the valley, going into these forests. There's no predatory animals on the new earth. So no other, you know, lions or tigers are going to be eating you if you're going into the forest. There's none of that, right? It's all very much more of a clement uh, connection between man and animals in that way but it's looking at yourself as the fourth density human, as the living light body, right? Mm -hmm. So the living light body would be what we'd refer to as an astral oriented body. 
It's a little bit different than a dream body because that's just basically your pure astral body. What this is, is more so on the idea of living light. In the book, Autobiography of a Yogi, uh, Paramahansa Yogananda was talking to his resurrected master, Yaktaswar Giri. And he would say that basically in that dimension, the bodies operate through lifetrons. They cause it lifetronic uh, cells in that way, or lifetronic atoms, not really like the atoms, but basically they, these particles that operate much more in a state of living light. Mm -hmm. Well, that's the whole idea. I was remembering what the higher self is telling me as I was looking into uh, New Earth. And I pulled up that book because one of my uh, participants in one of my groups said, Brad, what you, what you describe about the New Earth is very similar to what Yogananda described in his book. And so I looked in that. So yeah, he's got it. He's right on the money, right? With what I was describing with what the higher self is telling me. That is a paradise. Like I said, there's just certain ones that are chosen. We cannot just say, oh, can I just go there? It's not up to you. You have to be chosen. It's something that okay. spirit selects you and you know that you can go there, right? It's just kind of a natural feeling. It's like, I know I can breathe in and out. I know I can go to new earth. It's just a naturalness to you. So that invitation comes to you. So basically, uh, as you start to move yourself higher, higher up uh, in regards to this evolution that I'm talking about, you can now start to go off into your dream time. If you want to go to the new earth, you can go to the new earth. If you've been invited to do so, you'll go there. If not, you'll go to an earth that is appropriate for you to explore. Mm -hmm. There's more than just the idea of a third density and a fourth density earth. There's many different earths that you can explore that's suitable for yourself. Okay. Yeah, it's interesting. Um, Gail, did you want to ask a question? No, I was just agreeing. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of um, interesting photographs uh, that feel like sometimes like there's a there's a like a slipway or a portal between the third and the fourth um, density earth. Like a lot of people have been taking pictures of the sun and it looks like the most incredible plasma sun, for example. Like it's not just a round ball. It's like, it looks like an angel, like a plasm, plasmatic angel, you know, and there's, there's just places and um, spaces and times where I've looked out and it's like, wow, this certainly doesn't look like the earth that I was living in, you know. So sometimes there might be a bleed over or a, you know, a, a, a thinning of the veils or something. Yeah, there is, there certainly is. And I did a video on my channel called The True Nature of the Sun, right? And when you watch that video, you realize it's nothing what science has told you, right? So you're right. It certainly is like an etheric angel. It's basically an etheric body. That's its nature. And I, I've also referred to it kind of as a, as a living well of purity in that way. The sun is never, ever going to harm the earth. Okay, that's just not its, not its nature, right? The sun does not have its own light and it does not have its own heat. So therefore you can't have solar flares from the sun. You have solar plumes, but those solar plumes work together more so with water rather than fire. So basically you can actually see that the sun actually has uh, ether combined together with water. And it's more of a kind of like an aspect pertaining to radium. It's almost like a radium type construct, but again, it has, uh, it's filled with ether. So basically you're not looking at any particular form of celestial body like that to harm the earth. We get our own heat and light through sonoluminescence. And that happens through the nature of our atmosphere, that happens to the water vapor that's actually contained in our atmosphere as well too, that actually generates this light and heat effect as earth goes through its natural day and night cycles. So again, this is why when the sun first starts to rise, everything's red. Well, that's the idea of the energy being heated up when it's coming over to this side of the planet. And then when the sun sets, again, you see that redness it's cooling down and it's going on to the other side of the planet. So again, like I said, a fireball isn't gonna do that, okay? It just doesn't work that those physics do not match. So this is something that's much more vibrational. This is something that's much more etheric. This is something that works together much more with the living radiation that it is. It's much more, again, kind of like radium in that way. That's the nature of the sun. It's more of a radiation, etheric uh, cosmic body in that way, etheric body. So it's working in harmony with the earth. When we have solar plumes, because plumes certainly do come out, that's a benefit. Scientists are thinking, oh my God, it's thinning out the magnetic field. No, 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 you fools. It's not thinning out the magnetic field. The earth has the ability to thin or thicken her own magnetic fields based upon the activity she's getting from the solar activity taking place. 
So you're actually moving all that energy into her poles, her north and southern poles open up. And so she's collecting all of that energy. And that's exactly why we're experiencing all the intensities on this planet right now, because it's a manifestation of what the earth is going through. She's heating herself up and calling out all the weight so she can move up into the higher octaves. So that's exactly what's happened. This is why you're seeing dragons in the sky. This is why you're seeing all this etheric activity taking place that's shifting uh, the earth upwards more. So again, we're basically trimming away the fat. We're doing some culling here. We're culling away everything that represents the corrupt because it's not matching the frequency of where we're going. Some people are afraid that we're going to have a second pandemic again. I said, no, guys, that's not where we're going. It's already run its course, right? Oh, there's monkeypox. There's monkeypox. Yeah, guys, that's what we call a flavor of the month. <laughs> it lasts for a short amount of time and it fades away, just like how Delta and Omicron didn't really go anywhere, right? It started to fade away. Monkeypox fade away as well, too. Okay. Mm -hmm. These are, again, just old stories. And like I said, it wouldn't surprise me if the counter forces are basically just regurgitating that stuff just as a means to wake people up and say, well, how, people are, how are people doing? They realize a bunch of BS and they just continue to move on. So that's showing that there is a maturity coming upon the planet. That's the good news. People are starting to mature. It's taken a bit of time, but we are maturing. Or is the entire planet there? No, but we're certainly making a, a big way. I'd say about a third of the planet is now starting to move up into a higher state of maturity. And that's all you need. You only really need that much. Because when you start to look into the idea of the power of love, the power of that true upliftment within yourself, that is about 100 times more powerful than anything dense. Mm -hmm. So even a small amount of the population that's very, very loving will be just enough. And all it has to really be is about 10 or 15%. And that's stronger to completely trump away any dense energy. So we've been going through that momentum for quite a few years right now. And now we're moving up to about a third of the way now. And I'd say as we get into about the 2080s, we'll have about 50% of the population moved into that love frequency. So mm -hmm. we're moving upwards, guys. We're not going down. Yeah. Right? The people that see us going down, no offense, they are not seeing the world as it is. They're only looking at the bits and pieces and they're freaking out over the bits. Mm -hmm. You're not, you have to see the whole about what's going on through here. So again, when you're in beingness, you will see the whole. You'll realize we're going upwards. This is why I say everything that's happening right now is very, very positive. It's a very positive time because we're seeing all these things being cut out, called out, and basically being trimmed from the fat relating to the old earth that represented corruption. We're not on that earth anymore. We're moving out of it. And Brad, the, the idea of the dams being cleared um, and children being rescued, um, yeah, is, 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 that, is, that, is that actually happening? Because, oh, yeah. Yeah. Yes, and where are these children going? What do you mean? Where, I mean, there's absolutely no evidence. Well, they're, often, they're, they're often going to these uh, places that they can take them to. Basically, they're getting psychological help in that way because obviously they've been imprisoned. They may have families contacting them in that sense. So it all depends. Every child's different. Ones in that sense who may not have family may have these other particular forms of special programs helping them to mm -hmm. recover from the incidences. So they're always being helped in that way. But it's, it's, it all depends. You're looking at many thousands and thousands of children. Some of them are orphans. They're being mm -hmm. taken off the street in that way and they don't really have any family. So there's programs that are being done to help them to kind of help to help the heal. Uh, what they've been going through. I don't know. I haven't looked into that too much, but basically in the overview, that's really what I've seen. But yes, people, kids, these kids have been rescued, especially these last couple of years from a lot of these ancient uh, kind of like underground, uh, not, not just dumb bases, but the idea of vaults, uh, the idea of uh, storage containers mm -hmm. as well too. Ukraine has been notorious for basically trafficking those, those little ones, mm -hmm. right? So trafficking and bio labs is very much a part of what Ukraine was going through. Right? Yeah. It's basically their underground. It's not against the citizens whatsoever. They're wonderful, loving people. It's the same thing with Australia. Australia has the same problem pertaining to the idea of uh, uh, rings like that, traffic rings, laboratories like that as well too, drug trade, drug cartel. Ukraine was filthy with that. You, and Australia is pretty filthy with that. Mm -hmm. So this is why those two countries have been having probably the most difficult time. Yeah. Okay. I thought maybe the, the, the kids were being lifted off planet to go to some of the Oh no, 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 guys. Not, we gotta kind of no. get off that a little bit, right? We're we're getting too extraterrestrial here. 
<laughs> okay. It's not like that. Okay. And basically the off-worlders only intervene when they absolutely have to. They really are, they're not just, they're not sloppy, right? They have a non-interference policy and they really do not want to interfere unless it's the last thing that they have to do. This is why they have proxies here on the planet and this represents the ground crew, right? So they will meet at meetings quite commonly. These meetings take place at Cheyenne Mountain in the United States, mm -hmm. right? So those are one of the common meeting places. There's other ones as well too. There's ones in Russia that they may meet in that sense, but they do it very incognito. They're not here and saying, hey, humans, we're off worlders and we're gonna take care of your children. No, no. They basically want to make sure the ground crew is taking care of earth affairs. They got their hands tied doing a lot of other different things. They're basically cleaning up this entire star system right now. There's a lot of work to do. They're also on the moon right now. They're taking care of cleaning up the moon. So mm -hmm. a lot of stuff that needs to be done there. So it's not about the idea of thinking off-world extraterrestrial, no. I think you guys are just reading too much of the tabloids. No offense. <laughs> it's not really in that way. It's, that's not really how it is. It paints a cool picture. It's, oh, cool, okay, off-worlders are here to help rescue the children. No, sometimes they will give advice and they'll look into the looking glass technology and they'll say, okay, this is where you can find some of the bases. And then they kind of put their heads together and they locate these bases. They have assailants here on the ground where they're actually able to find these things. They have turncoats that come around and say, I can tell you exactly where a lot of these children are being held. And they get that information from on-worlders, mm -hmm. right? So sometimes the off-worlders may give them hints in there, but no, they're not here to uh, basically take care of our responsibilities. That's our job. Mm -hmm. So we have higher forces, yes, that are working together with us all the time, divine forces all the time, but it's not to think that ETs are going to do all this stuff and we're not doing anything, we can just sit back and relax and have a have a mocha. No, mm -hmm. we're here to do the work, we have to do it. So sometimes they can reach out their hand, and they can help us along a little bit here and there, but it's up to us to clean up our planet. The majority of that responsibility is about 90% falling to us. They may do the 10%, but the 90% is up to us. This is exactly what Adronis was telling me a lot when I channel him. He says, we're not here to fix your world for you. We're helping. We're assisting in the background. It's up to you guys. You have to do it. This is your planet, right? So we're only just giving you little tidbits here and there to help. Maybe that's why everything is going so slowly because we're just not getting the message. Well, it's, not, it's not that things are moving slowly or things are moving quickly. It's, again, the right time. Because this is, again, the evolution. It's not humanity that's in charge of the flow of how things are going. That's spirit's mm. responsibility, right? Everything needs to happen this way. In fact, I have not been seeing it slowly at all. We've been seeing things impacting so profoundly here. Like I said, look at where we've gone in the past 20, 30 years. That's not slow. That's very, very highly evolved compared to many other planets. They wouldn't reach that point within like a thousand years. We did it in about under 30. That's pretty quick if you ask me. Okay. So again, we just do, we, we are looking at the bits and pieces. You've got to see the whole to get an understanding about what's really going on here. And when you look at this and saying, compared to what we've been going through with many other planets, humanity has been evolving so freaking quickly. It's been amazing. We're getting all this stuff on the table really, really quickly to look at all these things and no, don't want that. No, don't want that. No, don't want that. I'm doing all this culling and I'm clearing all this away. We've been doing it very, very quickly, but it's not humanity's direction to decide that. It's spirit. Mm -hmm. This is God's world. This is God's universe. This is God's creation. Everything truly is God, and it's all up to the divine will to make these things happen. It's not up to us. All we're doing is we're being the instruments to playing this out, to letting these things happen from what the divine has already decided, and we're just playing along in this physical solid dimension. Okay. So it looks like we're out of time, guys. That's so, it. What a beautiful note to end on. Thank yeah. you so much for your time, Brad. It was absolutely Happy, amazing to be with you. Yeah. And we'll, we'll, definitely, we'll definitely meet up again soon. Thank you so much. All the best. Okay. Bye-bye. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, everybody. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>